Assalamu alaikum. Today's video is about the pneumonia. Pneumonia is broadly defined as any infection of the lung and in pneumonia this infection causes the inflammation of the lung parenchyma which is the actual lung tissue and due to this inflammation the air spaces may fill up with the fluid and this impairs the gases exchange because these are the sites these alveoli and air spaces are the sites where the gases exchange takes place where the blood receives the oxygen and carbon dioxide leaves out of the oxygen and enters the alveoli to be exhaled because when these air spaces are filled with fluid the gases exchange doesn't take place normally the clinic the classification of pneumonia based on the clinical settings the settings in which the pneumonia occurs the first is the community acquired pneumonia and it occurs in patients in the uh, settings where there are the public gatherings like the shopping malls wedding ceremonies and uh, so on the next is the hospital acquired pneumonia this occurs in patients after 48 hours of hospital admission and this is neither present in the patient nor incubating him in him when he was admitted to the uh, hospital but developed only after 48 hours of hospital admission this is of uh, nosocomial origin the next is the healthcare associated pneumonia and this develops in the patients outside of the hospitals and uh, the patients who have had recent substantial exposure to the healthcare settings like the nursing homes or the dialysis centers the next is the ventilator associated pneumonia this also develops 48 hours or more after the endotracheal intubation of the patient now the clinical form classification of pneumonia first is the lobar pneumonia in lobar pneumonia only one lobe is involved it may be a part of that lobe involved or it may be a segment of that lobe or it may be a whole lobe involved when both lungs have pneumonia or both lungs have con consolidation it is termed as double pneumonia the next is the bronchopulmonary pneumonia in this more than one lobes are involved or uh, more than one lobes have a fluid accumulation or the consolidation the causes of pneumonia include the bacteria like the streptococcus pneumonia mycoplasma pneumonia viruses may also cause uh, pneumonia like the influenza viruses and uh, fungi causes pneumonia in patients who are immunocompromised like the hiv patients or the patients receiving uh, immunosuppressant therapy now the pathophysiology first the agent invades the body invades the lungs there is the invasion by the agent and this triggers an inflammatory response in the patient and due to this inflammatory response the blood vessels are dilated causing the capillary leak that is the material which is present inside the capillaries starts to leak out into the pulmonary tissue and this creates an edema and exudate when this exudate fills up the air spaces there is impaired gas exchange as i explained already and uh, this leads to hypoxemia which is the low levels of uh, oxygen in the blood and there may also be respiratory acidosis because carbon dioxide is not normally leaving the blood and it gets accumulated in the blood since carbon dioxide is acidic in nature it uh, gives rise to respiratory acidosis also if this infection enters the bloodstream it uh, may cause sepsis which is a life-threatening condition now the clinical manifestations to remember the clinical manifestations we need to remember the word pneumonia the p stands for productive cough the patient may cough with sputum there may be pleuritic chest pain which may be due to the inflammation of the pleural membranes and this pain usually aggravates with coughing there may be neuro change especially in the elderly patients they may feel drowsiness or they may feel uh, disoriented there are elevated labs like the partial pressure of carbon dioxide you know, goes beyond 45 mm of Hg which is above the normal and also the count of WBCs increases unusual breath sounds are heard when escalating the lung fields the crackles are usually heard there may be mild to high fever and the oxygen saturation decreases because of the impaired gases exchange there may be nausea and vomiting increased heart rate and respiratory rate respiratory rate increases in order uh, so that the 
patient gets more and more oxygen into the body and blows off more and more of a carbon dioxide out of the body also there may be aching all over the body and the patient may feel tired with a little of the activity um, which is called the activity intolerance now how can we diagnose this condition we can take history from the patient and we can uh, do a physical examination where we can find increased tactile parameters it is the technique where we place the palmar side of our hands on the chest of the patient or the back of the patient and ask the patient to say 99 or blue moon and this causes the production of uh, vibrations inside the lungs and these vibrations can then be felt by the hands but when the lung fields are consolidated or they are filled with the fluid like in pneumonia there is increased tactile parameters more than the normal also there are unusual breath sounds like the crackles typically we can also take a chest x-ray which shows the regions of uh, consolidation or the fluid accumulation in the lungs we can use ct scan we can use sputum culture to find out the causative agent of the infection we can use bronchoscopy to look into the airways of the patient and we can use oximetry and uh, arterial blood gases to monitor the level of uh, different gases in the blood now pneumonia is a preventable condition it can be prevented and uh, there are two types of vaccines uh, for pneumonia the first is the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine pcv13 and uh, it is active against 13 strains of streptococcus pneumonia it is recommended for all adults 65 years of age or older than that and adults uh, 19 years or older with conditions that weaken the immune system like the patients with HIV, leukemia or the organ transplantation. The next is the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine PPSV23 and this is active against 23 strains of the streptococcus pneumonia. This is recommended for all the adults 65 years of age or older and for those adults 19 through 65 4 years of age who smoke cigarette or have asthma now the medical management of uh, pneumonia the first is the non-pharmacologic management we can turn the patient or ask the patient for coughing and breathing exercises to remove the secretions from the airways also we can employ postural drainage and just uh, physiotherapy to mobilize the secretions and to remove them we can give supplemental oxygen when there is sufficient decrease in the level of oxygen in the blood also we ask the patient to increase the fluid intake to at least two two to three liters per day because staying hydrated uh, helps the patient to keep the uh, secretions and uh, other fluids thin and this helps to uh, remove the secretions from the airways easily now the pharmacologic management since it is a bacterial infection in most of the cases the antibiotics are used and the antibiotics are used based on the culture and sensitivity reports the, for the patients with mild pneumonia who are otherwise healthy macrolides like the azithromycin or the clarithromycin are used but for the patients with serious illnesses like the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease heart diseases these are given one of the following fluoroquinolone and a high dose amoxicillin or amoxicillin clavulinate plus a macrolide since pneumonia can also be caused by the viruses uh, in the viral uh, causes of pneumonia like the influenza a or influenza b oseltamivir is used for the symptom relief aspirin bronchodilators and expectorants are used aspirin is an analgesic or the painkiller bronchodilators help to uh, dilate those inflamed bronchioles or the airways and to ease the breathing and expectorants help to remove the secretions from the lungs now the nursing management monitoring the respiratory system of the patient assessing the lung sounds lung sounds are assessed to find out if there are any adventitious or the abnormal lung sounds like the crackles wheezing and so on vital signs especially the respiratory rate because whenever a patient's condition is getting worse the respiratory rate increases and when the patient is recovering the respiratory rate decreases uh, to the normal range assessing the skin color because when a patient has a significant fall in the level of oxygen in the blood 
the color of the mucous membranes and the nail beds changes first to the purple and then to the blue and this is called cyanosis monitoring the arterial blood gases where we note uh, uh, levels of different uh, gases in the blood and uh, the carbonates and the ph of the blood applying suction as needed to remove the secretions from the major airways patient education educating the patient about the spirometry because spirometry helps to properly inflate the lungs and it preserves the function of lungs educating the patient about staying hydrated because staying hydrated keeps the secretions thin and these are then easy to expectorate out of the lungs elevating the head side of the bed especially while eating because this decreases the chances of uh, aspiration educate the patient about to stop the smoking and inform the patient about the vaccine about uh, how to get the vaccine and when to get the vaccine Finally, we have to administer the medications that the physician has prescribed for the patient. Thank you. That was all about the pneumonia.